why do the world face so many disasters? You know, I was thinking about that this morning, and I want you to see three things from the Word of God. While the world is faced with so many disasters, the first one I want you to see is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 16, and verse number 11. The Bible said, Then shall thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, say the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. The first thing we see from the children of Israel, when they were in bondage, God took them out from bondage. And the Bible said, they were happy for a moment. And God told them that, listen, you should all worship me and never forget me and never forsake me. And they were happy for a moment. But then the Bible said, one day, they turned away from God and they became rebellious in their thoughts and in their imagination. And the Bible said God sent Jeremiah the prophet and Jeremiah the prophet went to them and preached that God is going to, you know, send disaster upon them. And God tell them, the reason why are you faced with disaster? It's not because I want to give you disaster. It's because you have forsaken me. And that is what we see here in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 11, um, 16 and verse number 11. It's God said, because your fathers have forsaken me. That's the first thing I want you to see. They have forsaken God. Today, the same thing we see today in the life of many. Many do not think about God today. Many wake up in the morning and many don't fear God. Many think that they have the money. Many think that they have the education. Many think that they have their wealth. Many think that they have their position, powers. And so they don't want to hear anything about God. They have forsaken God. God is not in their thoughts. God is not in the imagination. God is not in their everyday walk of life. And the Bible said God is angry when people do things like that. And we see exactly what is going on in this world. Why disaster is coming after disaster is because the people has forsaken the law of the Lord. And that is one of the reasons God sent disaster. I want you to see from the book of Joshua, chapter number 24, quickly. Joshua, chapter number 24. I want you to see here from the book of Joshua, chapter number 24, verse number 16 and verse number 17. This is what happened here. From the book of Joshua, it's in the Old Testament. God has, you know, they have forsaken God. And God is angry with them. And God sent disaster. And you all know, they were in, they were, they were in bondage in Babylon for 70 years. And the enemy messed up their life. The book of Joshua, chapter number 24, and verse number 16. This is what they said. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. You know when Joshua came to the end of his life, he said, listen, as for me and my house, we will serve God. And the Bible said, and he reminded them of all the good things God has done for them. And this is what they said. They said, and the people answered and said, God forbid, you know, when you want to um, say, me, I will never do something like that. That is what they are saying here. And God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to so serve other gods. Look here in verse number 11. For the Lord our God, he is that brought us up, out, our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserve us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. So they were excited for a moment. They said, the Lord forbid that we should do such a thing. But when they were in bondage, the reason why they were in bondage, we see from the book of Jeremiah that they forsake God. And you see, beloved, that is going on in this world today. You see people, regardless of this coronavirus, still I have yet to hear people come together and say it as nation, as countries, that let us pray and you know, leave out the Christian group. But all those wicked politicians and all these wicked people that will say, you know what, we will forsake our way and come to God's way. No, we don't hear that. We don't see even the pastors today, many of them, they hear just the coronavirus and many of them, 
you know, close the doors already. They have not learned to come together and pray, and that should not be it. So we see God send disaster after disaster on the nation of Israel or the children of Israel because they have forsaken him. And God causes the children of Israel, you know, they were so strong. You know, David, under his rulership, caused the 12 tribes of Israel to come together. When his son took over King Solomon, the Bible <coughs> said the kingdom was split. And when he died, and after that his son took over, Rehoboam and the kingdom of Israel was split. And two tribes went this side here, and ten tribes went on the other side. And one of the reasons why it was split is because the people went after other gods, and they served other gods. And today, we have other gods. And when many people do not serve the true and living God, many God, people, their gods is money. Many people, their God is, you know, work. Many people, God is, you know, their children, their wife, their, their, you know, their political party. We should be careful about those things. I want to encourage you that if people don't want disaster to happen in their life, they ought to see God always in their life. And that is not what we see in the children of Israel, their life. And that's why you will see from the book of Daniel when King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed the dream, the Bible said the king of gold signified that the nation of Babylon, and then, the, the, then you had the silver, the Medes and the Perthes, and then you have the Greece, and then you had the Roman Empire mixed with iron and clay to show you that the nation of Israel is under the gentle rulership. The reason why they are under the gentle rulership is because they have forsaken the God of Israel. And we see from the scripture that they are, the reason why they are faced with so many disasters and we are faced with so many disasters today is number one, many has forsaken God. And beloved, God don't want you to do that. And that is going on in this world today. I want you to see from the book of Jeremiah that Jeremiah also he cried out to the people. God said to him, look at what you all have done. You have gone after wells that have no fountain. You have gone on to this place and that place and they have not been no, no, no thing unto you. And that is not what God wants. So beloved, I want to encourage you that the reason why nations and countries and, you know, are faced with disaster is because they have forsaken God. And it is time that we as nation and as country and as you know leaders and all over the world come to our knees and say lord we have forsaken you take away this disaster from me and the bible said if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves pray and seek my face i will hear from above i will heal their land and i will forgive them the bible is clear but god said i have prepared and i have done i'm going to do this evil against them one of the reasons why? It's because they have forsaken me. Under the rulership of King Ahab, the Bible said one of the king of Israel, he sinned against God. You study the scripture and you will see that he caused the people to sin. He married a woman by the name of Jezebel. And the Bible tells us he built her an, a, you know, a, a grove. He made her an altar for her false god to worship. And the Bible said God was angry with that. And God sent Elijah the prophet. And Elijah the prophet went and he, he preached to them. And Elijah said, three years and six months there will be no rain. And the, James tells us it's the three years and six months. Think about it. The disaster. He put himself in a lot of problems and put the people in a lot of problems. The reason why God withheld the rain from them is because they have forsaken him. And today the same thing. You have money today. You cannot spend it because you are in, in between four walls, right? You have riches, you can enjoy it. You are between four walls. You have so much, you can even have money to fly out the country, but you cannot go. Because why? Many has forsaken God, and God doesn't want that. So, beloved, that's the first reason God sent disaster. is because people have forsaken him. A coronavirus, it has its bad effect. But on the other side, let us be honest, it will, bring, um, it, will, it will remind the people that they need to come back to God. And like Brother Melvin said, many are using this occasion to come back to God. But think about it. Do we always have to wait when God sends disaster so that we should return to Him? 
no beloved. We should not. Always serve Him and always be faithful to Him. The second thing we see from the scripture, and that is Jeremiah chapter number 19 and verse number 15. Jeremiah 19 and verse number 15. Not only have they forsaken Him, but also in Jeremiah 19 and verse number 15. The Bible said here, Thus say the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I bring upon this city and upon all her tongues all the evil <coughs> that I have pronounced against it, because they have what? Hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. The, the second thing God said, the reason why I bring evil upon you is because you harden your necks. Now that's a, a, a strong language God used there. But to harden your necks is to feel no remorse of what you have done. And there are a lot of people today, they are living wickedly and they are doing wrong things and they don't feel no remorse of what they are doing. And that is what was going on in the life of the children of Israel. They have done so much evil and evil upon evil and they harden their necks. They harden their life. Have you ever talked to some people and it doesn't have no effect upon them because they have hardened their necks. And that is what is going on in this world. That's why God is sending disaster. And God said here that this evil that I send upon you is not because I want to send it, but because you have done evil. And I will bring upon this city, upon all her tongues, and all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, that they might not hear my words. You see, beloved, that the second way that God sent disaster. It is a terrible thing, but it is a true statement from the word of God. They were good. They were happy when God brought them out from Egypt. But look at what they did. They hardened their hearts. They hardened their necks. And the Bible said, and God sent this evil upon them. And they were in bondage for 70 years. Can you imagine? Everything was taken away from them. Their sons were taken away from them. Their daughters were taken away from them. They were again in bondage serving another king when they should have been enjoying the goodness of God. And that's the second thing, that the second reason God sent disaster to this world is because many have hardened their necks. They have not, you know, the word of God don't have effect upon them. No matter how you tell them that you need to turn from your wicked way, Come to God, seek Him, serve Him, look out for Him. They do not want to hear that. It will have no effect upon them. And God said in His Word, you know, that is how God works. If you don't want to go by the easy way, then you'll have to choose the hard way. And then it's when people come to their mind and their senses. And the Bible said when they were in bondage, then it's when they remember the goodness of God. Remember in the book of Psalm 137, they asked them, sing us a song. And they couldn't sing the Lord's song. That is what? When we remember, what? When we remember, when we remember Zion, when we remember all the good things that we had, they can't sing the Lord's song because they knew fully well that they have messed up big time. And beloved, this morning, the second reason why God sent this Disaster is because the people have hardened their necks. The third thing that God sent disaster, look here from the book of Jeremiah chapter number 18, and verse number 15. Jeremiah 18 and verse number 15. Because my people <coughs> have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in the ways from the ancient past, to walk in paths in a way not to cast up. So the third way we see God send disaster is because they have forgotten him. You know, they forsook him, that means they abandoned him. Now they have forgotten him completely. You know, to forget somebody is not to have him in his mind or her mind. You know, sometimes you will try to tell people when they have sorrow and trials and tribulation, well, forget about that problem that you have. What are you telling them? You're telling them to, to don't have it in your mind. Just pull it out from your mind. Don't remember about it. And that is exactly what the children of God did. They have forgotten him. 
but because my people had forgotten me. You know, that's a terrible thing to know that you have done so much for people and still they have forgotten him. And that is exactly the same thing. We see that God has done so much for them, but they have forgotten him. And many people, when they wake up in the morning, how do you know that they forgot God? They have nothing to talk about God. They wake up and they talk about themselves. That God is not in their thoughts. God is not in their imagination. But beloved, let us not. You know, let us return to our, on our knees and let us humble ourselves and cry out to God. I want you to see from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 8, quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verse number 10 to verse number 14. This is what happened here. This is what God said to them. And this is exactly what they did. 8, Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse number 10. God said here to, to, to Moses, When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. So God said, when you, when, you, when, you, when you eat, you shall bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given you. So always bless him for his good things. Look here. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. You see, God said it here. God said to Moses, tell these people. God knew exactly that they were going to forget him. But God still reminded them. You know, many times I will tell Shirley, hey, when she go to the shop, Hey, do not forget to take this for me. Or do not forget to buy that. What I'm saying is that I want to have this. So do not forget it. And sometimes when she forgets, sometimes I get upset or sometimes she gets upset. But the thing is that we should not forget. And exactly the same thing God said. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgment and his statutes which I commanded thee this day. You see? Look in verse number 19. To 20 and it shall be if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them I testify against you this day that he shall surely perish you see God said it here if you forget me this is terrible God said if you forget me you will surely perish and look how many people are perishing today thousands of people are perishing today as the nation which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall he perish, because he will not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. You see? So we see the first thing God sent disaster, or the, one of the reasons God sent disaster is because many have forsaken him. The second thing is that their heart, their necks are hardened, or their hearts are hardened. And the third thing we see that they have forgotten God. And beloved, many have forgotten God. And God said, the day that you forget me, this is what is going to happen. You shall surely perish. And perish means you're going to die. Have you ever think about that? God said it, and it happened. Look here in Psalm chapter number 9, verse number 17. The book of Psalm. <coughs> it's a terrible thing to forget God. And exactly the same thing. This world is getting wicked. And God knows how to deal with it. And because of that, the Bible said, verse number, chapter 9 and verse number 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. You see? And all the nations that forget God. The Bible is clear. And many nations have forgotten God. Many nations. We have a lot of political leaders that for, has forgotten God. But that should not be it, beloved. That should not be it. Let us look at Judges, chapter number 8. The book of Judges, chapter number 8, and verse number 33 to verse number 34. And in this, we will close. The book of Judges, chapter number 8, Verse number 33 to verse number 34. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went a warring after Balaam and made Baal their God. You see, they forget God so easily. 
And the children of Israel remember not the Lord. You see? Their God, who had delivered them <coughs> out of the hands of all the enemies on every side. You see? And God sold them again into problem. You study the scripture. Why are we faced with so many disasters? It's because many nations have forsaken God. China don't want to hear anything about God. Many nations do not want to hear anything, anything about God. They have forsaken Him. China, their necks and their hearts are hardened. That is so sad. And most of all, many countries and nations, the Bible tells us they have forgotten God. We have our Wi-Fi today. We have our computer today. And most of the time we spend with these things, but most of the time we spend it. Nothing is wrong to have Wi-Fi, don't get me wrong. But it is not used for the glorification of God. And that should not be it. So we see God knows how to get people's attention. They have forgotten God. And that's why God sent disaster upon disaster. Don't think it was because, you know, God is not pleased. It's just like a father, he's not pleased to whip his child, son. He's not pleased to spank him. But if he will not listen, the Bible says you are not to spare the rod and spoil a child. But you see, that's exactly the same thing God does with us. And many people today, they have forsaken God. And many people want to say it's because of this. Now look at what happened. Many nations, they come up with rules. And that is to stay home. And now of course you need to avoid. I'm not saying that's the wrong thing. Many nations came up with rules. You cannot walk from this time until that time. And I understand that also. Because men want to prevent. But on the other side, People don't want to acknowledge that it's because of us we have done such a wicked thing. People don't want to acknowledge we have messed up big time. That's why we are faced with the challenges. You all remember that God was going to send destruction upon Nineveh. And Nineveh, the Bible said, the people were so wicked. You study the scripture and you will see. In Nineveh, the people were so cruel. They were so cruel, and God was going to destroy that city. And so God sent Jonah, and you all know Jonah didn't want to go. And so when Jonah hid from God, God still called Jonah to go there. And Jonah preached a couple, one couple, couple words, yet 40 days, and Nineveh will be overthrown, or shall be overthrown. And the Bible tells us from the king until the lowest of everybody, they put on sackcloth. And the Bible said they went into dust and ashes and they cried out to God. And you know what God did? God turned from what he was going to do to them. And beloved, that's the same thing today. If people will just humble themselves and say, God, we have messed up. We have forsaken you. We have hardened our hearts. And we have forgotten you. Lord, forgive us. Here we are. I'm 100% sure God is going to turn from what He has you know, put out to destroy. And beloved, we do not see that. But we need to be honest. And leaders need to be honest. And the church needs to wake up. Instead, the church wake up. The church is using this time. You know, I talked to Brother Rudy. And he said a wonderful thing to me. You know, I was telling him when I was growing up. If we can't go to church, then we will have church at home. And I'm sure, he said to me, well, Brother Marlon is going to have a few readings of scripture, have church with his family. And I said, that is good. People must use this opportunity. Not because we cannot gather with more than 10, that means you should stay home now and not want to worship him. You see? And do not want to have anything to do with him. Beloved, let us not search for opportunity. To say, you know what, I'm going to stay home and do this and do that. Beloved, let us search for opportunity to pray and seek Him. And so we see from the scripture, 
that the Bible said God demanded from them. And God showed them that you have forgotten me. Gideon was a great man. But when Gideon died, what did they do? They remember not the Lord. The Bible said in the book of Judges, chapter number 2 and chapter number 1, we see that there arises another generation that knew not the Lord. Isn't that sad? They forget God completely. They forget God completely. And that is terrible. And they were faced with challenges and destruction. And disaster came upon disaster. But you will see also, when they returned to God, God blessed them. God opened doors for them. And God showered his blessing upon them. And if you want the sun to shine upon your life, beloved, then you ought to do what God tells you to do. And beloved, I encourage you this morning, send the message out that we need to seek him and him only. Do not forsake him. Do not harden your hearts. And do not forget him. But serve him all the days of your life. Come and let us close the service in prayer.